Hi everyone, today we'll be talking about how to convert row names into a particular column. If you don't know what row names are, I'll explain it to you in this video. And if you don't know how to convert row names into a certain column that you can use in your analysis, I'll tell you that as well. So with that, let's dive in. So what are exactly row names? In row names, when we upload a data set, when we import a data set from our folders, there is sometimes a case that happens where the first column is not actually a column, it's the row name. So where you see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, there's actually a name in place of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And this generally happens with some preloaded data sets in R or can also happen in, in some random data set that you upload into R from your folders. So I just give you an example of a data set which is present in R which has this very same issue and then I'll show you the code to rectify the same issue as well. Now let's start the code. We'll clean the environment as usual. RM list is equal to LS. Please check out the video on the top right if you haven't already. The meaning behind this statement is very uh, nice and you know good to know before you use it in any of your codes. Then I'll load the empty cast data set which is already present in data sets package in R. It's preloaded as a default. You don't need to preload it to you know name it. So I'll just name it DF1, data frame one, and I'll run this chunk. So now you see uh, DF1 is created in my environment and if I click on it we can see we have all the data variables all the uh, variables rows loaded into, into this data set this data set for cars and it gives uh, information around their miles per gallon cylinders displacement horsepower etc here you can notice in the first column it's not actually a column right it's like the column headers and the row headers so but we actually know that these are car names we would actually like to extract these names from a column when we need to, right? So this does not actually give a good look as to I would really like to have row numbers 1, 2, 3, 4 here and this should be a column for me to use. But how to rectify the situation? Now that we know what the problem is and we, uh, we have to rectify it, we can actually use dplyr package to use the chaining operator and a command in the table package called row names to columns that can help us convert a row name into a column from table package. Now, why am I using table package now but, but telling you about loading the dplyr package? So the dplyr package earlier had a function called add row names, uh, which used to do the same thing, but now it has been converted into row names to column, which is only present in the table package. So there's a tidyverse overall uh, package that contains this table, dplyr, tidyr and all, all of these packages which actually are enrolled into one master package. So this is part of the tidyverse which is very helpful. If you want to check more about the dplyr, please check out the playlist link on the top right or you know the first video of this playlist on the top right. Um, this is the series which focuses only on the dplyr package, how the chaining operator works what to do for certain things using dplyr and how is dplyr a very useful package in the r universe now coming back we uh, load the dplyr package for the chaining operator then we uh, use the chaining operator this is called the chaining operator the table package from table package we extract the function row names to column and we want to name the column model right because that's what the name in df1 is these names are model of the cars Merc 230, Merc 280, Mazda MX4, Datsun 710. These are all names of the models. So now we go back and I run this command, which is row names to column. And I see that a DF2 has been created, which has 12 variables. So one more column has been added. Let's look at uh, what is processed. And now we see that the first column is called model, which has the names of all the models of cars. And on the left hand side, it's back to normal where we have 1, 2, 3, 4, till 32, the row numbers. In DF1, we had this, and in DF2, we have this. So we have successfully processed our uh, problem into an answer, and we have used in the process the table package, row names to column function, and use a deep layer package for the chaining operator. Thanks for watching this video, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.